Oh, there. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Joyner, I'm, I'm glad you're here today. Uh, I do think personally that we need a little more diversity on campuses. Uh, I'd, I'd like to ask you what you know about Stanford's DEI program. Uh, you hear, at least in universities in Wisconsin, great concerns about the lack of di diversity among faculty, uh, whether you measure that, fa measure that by uh, religious background or religious belief, whether you measure it by political belief. Um, students feel that frequently they have to lie because of the hatred uh, towards more conservative view of the world. Do you, do you feel that the DEI offices in Stanford are diverse like our whatever, you know, 45% of the people you'd guess uh, pro-life or uh, didn't, you know, maybe 45 to 50% vote for President Trump, that sort of thing. What's your opinion of the diversity of the DEI offices at Stanford? Um, what I've seen at Stanford is that the DEI office is very um, one-sided. Um, there is not much neutrality, and what we've seen in incidents like the Stan I, I, I don't personally interact much with these DEI officials, and I don't know many students who do, despite Stanford having one of the highest, the highest rate of DEI officials per capita. Um, what we do see from the DEI officials are um, these videos, like this a six-minute speech from the dean at Stanford Law School a couple weeks ago, um, the harmful language initiative released from Stanford, um, that really tends to censor free speech. Um, and so these, these DEI officials are, are, are not really promoting this diversity of thought. Um, they're, they're actually squashing it in the classroom and uh, the university. I'm familiar with the Stanford video. It seems there was a lot of hate going on at Stanford that day. Uh, do you feel there's a lot of hate disseminated by the DEI bureaucracy? Um, I'm not sure that I would say there's a lot of hate um, disseminated by the bureaucracy, but what we've seen, um, like just that video from, from a few weeks ago at Stanford Law School, is that these university administrators who are supposed to be the ones enforcing these principles, which are in the university's policies, are not doing just that. Um, and they're condemning, um, in this case, Judge Kyle Duncan's right to speak, um, condemning his actions, and, and they're not taking the place of a neutral university administrator and not doing their jobs. Okay, uh, Mr. Shapiro, could you comment in general on the cost of these DEI programs and do they add anything to uh, the academic atmosphere that you get in universities? Well, the, uh, uh, the, the cost of uh, tuition and university budgets has certainly exploded in the last 5, 10, 15 years, concomitant with the growth of uh, initially, bureaucracies more more broadly and non-teaching staff. I think about 2010, uh, non-teaching staff started to uh, exceed the number of, of teaching full-time uh, uh, instructors uh, at most institutions. And of late, uh, most of that uh, bureaucratic growth has been in the DEI sector. I can't. I don't have a, a number off the top of my head or an average. Wait a or minute. Anything did did you just say that in the universities today? We have among white collar jobs more people who are non-teaching positions than teaching positions? In some places there are more non-teaching staff than students indeed. You could have somebody wrote a, a cute op-ed saying maybe each student at Yale should get their own personal butler. Well, that, that's shocking. Uh, but, but perhaps no, no wonder there's so many kids in debt out there, huh? Um, could, you, could you elaborate uh, a little bit more on are they making progress, the DEI? in hiring more conservative professors or well, making the professors more like America in general? Is, is that, are they making any progress there? Or are they really going the opposite direction, kind of the opposite of diversity? We want to stamp out diversity. Faculty hiring is generally separate from DEI, although the DEI offices do imp impose diversity statements, uh, loyalty oaths to progressive orthodoxy that uh, have proliferated uh, upwards of a quarter of faculty, I think, these days nationwide ha can't be hired if they don't pass that ideological litmus test. Uh, but uh, similarly, uh, on the other side of whether they're succeeding on their own terms, there have been campus surveys, a uh, very good report by Scott Yenner about Texas A&M specifically, uh, Jonathan Haidt, the social psychologist, has done good work on this. Uh, as the DEI offices have grown, uh, students' comfort and sense of belonging at school has decreased, and that's especially among members of racial minorities. So even on their own terms, DEI offices are failing spectacularly. Do you think because the, the uh, Congress, the state legislatures, contribute so much money to uh, academia, 
that we have to step in, as we have in the private sector and shouldn't have, quite frankly, but we have to step in and force more diversity, like, you know, say like 40% of the English professors should be conservative, religious in thought, or that sort of thing? Mr. Chairman, I see the red light on. May I answer? Um, well, again, I'm, I'm hesitant to recommend uh, state legislatures, let alone Congress, get involved in minutia of, of faculty hiring or impose some sort of quotas or preferences, affirmative action, uh, based on, on ideology. So I wouldn't recommend that. But I would, as I said, uh, recommend strings attached to federal funding uh, to make sure that everyone's treated equally, nobody's discriminated against, free speech rights are observed, and there's not this huge chilling effect where faculty and student alike feel like they have to walk on eggshells lest they be uh, uh, investigating, in, in, investigated by these diversity inquisitors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 